Hi guys, I wanted to go over a quick article I found this morning while doing some research on my phone. Let's pull it up. And I always talk about the demand side of the equation in the economy and when we're thinking through deflation and inflation. And we always talk about money supply and whatnot. That kind of goes back to demand. But we never really talk about supply. I try to do it as much as I possibly can in my videos. But I think that's one thing that most people are missing. And that might be the, the most important thing that we should think through moving forward to try to determine what the probabilities are of higher consumer price inflation in the future. So this is an article from Yahoo Money. Record number of workers calling out, oh, I was always calling in, sick is slowing the economic recovery. And I think one of the main reasons they're calling in sick, above and beyond the obvious, is because of the stimulus checks. I mean, what's the motivation to go into work when you're getting paid more, potentially, to sit at home and do nothing? And if you do go back into work and take your job, you're taking a pay cut while on top of taking a potential health risk. So it, we've the incentives are completely perverse in our economy today. So I think that would play just as significant a role as what's going on with the cervasis sickness. But my point, we kind of come midway down the article here. Michael Gappin, chief U.S. economist at Barclays, told Yahoo Finance that all the missed work is leading to a supply chain disruption and is slowing the rebound in the manufacturing sector. In other words, we're producing less stuff. But as you guys saw on yesterday's videos and the charts I've used in many of my whiteboards on the George Gammon channel, the amount of currency units in the real economy chasing those goods and services is increasing and most likely will increase significantly in the future if we go to some form of UBI or permanent stimulus. They go on to in this next paragraph and kind of expand on that. You can see this anecdotally through the ISM, Institute for Supply Management report, that was released in November, said Gappin. It had many anecdotal responses that included things like difficulty rearranging workspaces to get production done, worrying about labor shortages because either workers are infected or they've been quarantined because... They were in close proximity of someone who's infected, and it's limiting the ability of the sector to rebound and satisfy household demands for goods. So demand going up or demand even staying consistent, but supply going down means consumer prices going up. And we keep scrolling down. There's something else relevant here at the bottom, I recall. Ah, got to hit the continue button. <laughs> this is a little bit different than how it looked on my phone. Oh, here we go. Tyson Foods CEO Dean Banks said on a recent earnings call that workers calling out, calling in sick, has increased the cost and complexity of our operations. And he expects that trend to continue in the next year, 2021. So my point in bringing this up to you guys is to show that we should not only be thinking about the demand side, we should not only be thinking about money supply or currency supply, but we should also be thinking about the reduction in the supply of goods and services and that our economy just isn't making as much stuff as it used to. And it didn't used to make that much stuff to begin with. <laughs> so let's think these things through. And I don't see us producing more goods and services anytime soon, especially with further shutdowns of the economy and further stimulus checks incentivizing people to stay home.